from the station that's on your side. This is News 12, NBC 26 at 11. Tonight, coming up, pet owners in Aiken County got excited to walk to their furry friends this Sunday as the organizers are walking to raise money for a good cause. But first, an investigation is underway after a shooting incident happened this afternoon. Richmond County deputies say they identified a suspect wanted for aggravated assault. That left a victim with two gunshot wounds. Deputies say they found the victim at the Chevron gas station across from the Surrey Center at 11 a.m. They say the victim had at least two gunshot wounds on their arm and leg was taken to the hospital shortly afterward. And deputies are now looking for 21-year-old Santonio Davis in connection to the shooting. And they say he was last seen driving a 2015 white Nissan earlier today and add he's considered armed and dangerous. If you have any information regarding Davis, please call the sheriff's office. And near Grovetown, traffic went from fast to bumper to bumper during two separate accidents today. This is a time-lapse video from our Grovetown camera at I-20. Columbia County dispatchers say drivers were blocked on I-20 westbound from an overturned car. There's no word yet on the extent of the driver's injuries or how it flipped. Then on the other side of the interstate, more traffic was backed up from another accident. Both of these happened around 3 o'clock. Everything cleared away, though, in a little over an hour. Well, thank you for those updates so far, Curry. Glad to hear that traffic cleared up. We still have some mid to low 40s sneaking in there as well. High temperatures for your afternoon today did top off around the mid to upper 70s, so an above normal day compared to that normal high temperature of about 68. We're seeing temperatures right now falling back to near 50 for some locations, but we still hang on to some upper 50s to low 60s as you look south towards portions of Louisville, Waynesboro, and Jefferson Burke County, all the way down there in Emanuel County. Swainsboro at about 63, but we'll talk more about the forecast for the upcoming week coming up in just a bit. Well, friends of the animal shelter or FOTUS welcomed dog parents of all kinds to a massive dog walk today, but not just any normal walk. It's the second annual dog walk for charity hosted by Aiken Steeplechase. All donations raised today go directly to FOTUS. Our Sydney Hood is live in the studio tonight to show us how volunteers are trying to raise money for the shelter. Well, today was more than just a walk in the park with man's best friend. More than 100 walkers, both two- and four-legged companions, went the extra mile in support of photos, given both physical donations such as dog food and toys and more than $1,000 as well. It's all to help the more than 4,000 animals the shelter receives each year find their forever homes. <laughs> it's man's best friend. <laughs> or in this case, about a hundred of them here. We saw a lot of dogs that were here today that were shelter alumni. Dogs like Harrison. Very close, like this. Close and forever together. He's a really sweet dog. I, I've never seen him get in a fight with anyone or or, or bite anyone. He's, he's really a good, good companion. Harrison found his two-legged companion at the Aiken County Animal Shelter. The shelter is full right now. We have... Um, 84 kennels and some are doubled up. The shelter receives more than 4,000 unwanted animals each year, <gasps> which is what brings Nessie out here today, looking for a forever home. The more the, the community is involved with our animal shelter, the more we can find them homes yeah. and get them help. It's no walk in the park, but... We couldn't save all these animals without our community support. And it's the community support walking the extra mile for more success stories like Harrison's. You're giving the dog a home and you're also getting a companion. FOTUS is always looking for volunteers and fosters, and you can call the shelter directly or you can visit their website to learn more. And in order to do that, you want to be sure and check this story out on our website for all the information you need. A good shot of serotonin to start the week off and lots of furry friends. Thanks for that coverage, Sydney Hood. Well, commuters heading towards Columbia in the middle of the night. There's some construction going on. I-20. Now, SC dot officials say between exits 22 and 29, they'll have the right lane closed there for some work, but they say it's expected to be over by 9.30 a.m. tomorrow. And President Biden said tribute today to Heroes of Bloody Sunday in Selma, Alabama, joining thousands for the annual commemoration of the seminal moment of the U.S. Civil Rights Movement. CBS News correspondent Christian Benavides reports. With his eye on the White House, former President Donald Trump took aim at his potential Democratic rival, President Biden. We will evict Joe Biden from the White House. And we will liberate America from these villains and scoundrels once and for all. 
Trump's speech Saturday night at the annual Conservative Political Action Conference comes as the field of GOP candidates widens. Former Maryland Governor Larry Hogan, who told Face the Nation he will not enter the race, says he wants his party to move away from Trump's grip. I think we certainly uh, went off in the wrong direction. I would say the party of Reagan is not dead, uh, and neither is the party of Trump. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis, who placed a second behind Trump in the CPAC straw poll for the Republican Party nomination for president, spoke at the Reagan Library outside Los Angeles. And yes, we need to win the fight for freedom, and if we do, we will be winning one more for the Gipper. President Biden, who has not officially said he's seeking re-election, is in Selma, Alabama to commemorate the 58th anniversary of Bloody Sunday, a flashpoint in the civil rights movement. Beaten, tear gas. On this bridge, blood was given to help redeem the soul of America. The president joined others in a march across the historic Edmund Pettus Bridge. Christian Benavides, CBS News, Miami. Coming up. A series of train derailments is making people anxious for their safety. See how officials are responding when we come back. Don't miss the... State officials from Clark County, Ohio, confirmed there were no hazardous materials spilled in a train derailment over this past weekend. And another train from the Norfolk Southern Company derailed yesterday just before 5 p.m. This time, Springfield Town Fire says it involved large high-tension power lines. One Ohio representative says safety is one of their top priorities. Obviously, we're in a time where it's very sensitive with a, a with another rail event with uh, East Palestine right on our minds and uh, the needs that are there. Uh, but certainly wanted to say that uh, in the Ohio House and legislature right now, we're obviously looking for all of the things that will come out of these incidents so we can find um, good legislation if it needs to be um, formed and passed. Officials also reiterated there was no threat to public health in this accident. Over to Long Island, New York, officials are investigating a small plane crash that left one person dead and two others critically injured today. Local and federal aviation officials say it crashed and landed near several homes around 3 p.m. The FAA says it was just short of its destination to an airport in Farmingdale. The FAA and the National Transportation Safety Board will investigate the crash, including what caused the plane to go down. And Douglasville, Georgia officers say two people were killed in a shooting this weekend and six others were injured. Officers say it happened at a house party last night with more than 100 guests. One of the neighbors told our Atlanta sister station it was a sweet 16 party with lots of kids. Investigators believed it started from a confrontation and officials haven't released any suspect information yet. Well, friends family and some city officials came together this afternoon to celebrate the 103rd birthday of marital tut she spent most of her life in augusta having lived here since 1956 and marital tells us she raised two children by herself after her husband passed away and all while being kind to people around her she says that's the secret to living a long life i've had plenty of problems plenty of problems but the law brought me through my and i can tell anyone the law been good to me. Amen. The city of Augusta will issue her a proclamation on Tuesday, and her best advice to young people is to do the right thing because she says so many end up doing the wrong thing there. And a very happy birthday from all of us here on the News 12 Weekend Crew, Miss Tut. Oh, yes. Happy birthday, Miss Tut. And uh, that's some good words of advice from somebody from the older generation right there. So amen to that. But as far as rainfall chances, towards the end of the week, some of the better chances do creep in. We'll take a closer look at that coming up next. Plus, three women play the power of teamwork to make their mark in sports broadcasting. Hear how they describe how they paved the way for future students coming up next. Throw and go. You're watching NBC 26 on your side. Close captioning for this newscast brought to you by Hearing Associates of South Carolina. A trio of students at the University of Wisconsin-Madison are making history by forming the first all-female sports broadcast in the school's student radio station. Andrew Benstra has the inspiring story from Madison. 
I am Tia Sarlin here with Chrissy Birdsall at the Cole Center. UW student-run radio station celebrated its 21st birthday last week. A few days earlier, though, they made a different kind of history. We just kind of, on our own, wanted to do an all-female broadcast. We didn't really look into the history of it at all. I don't know if there was ever one before that. They said they were going to check their notes, and neither of them had seen an all-female broadcast in the 20-something years that WSUM has been a station. On Monday, February 20th, the Trailblazing Trio formed UW's first-ever all-female student sports broadcast team. I think we set such a good standard, and I'm so excited to see more female broadcasts. <laughs> Once we finished that final call and took off our mics, I remember we all kind of had this sigh of relief, like, we did it. It was, it was an amazing experience. Tia, a senior, was the only female in sports at WSUM her freshman year. As she looks down at the glass ceiling she's broken, it's cleared the path for the next generation. Every year it felt like we're getting further and further towards having more women involved. And Nick, the sports director right now, told us that there's five or six women in the training program right now. And so I feel so fortunate that this program has grown in the way that it has. Sports is a male-dominated industry, and broadcasting magnifies that. So for all the girls that were told they can't? You can't say that someone, a girl, can't do it because we just did. Which means that for all the women that come after, this trio showed that it is possible. With our women's broadcasters here that, you know, it was a great first step, but I think that we're all kind of hoping for that to eventually become the norm rather than the main exception trailblazing the way in the industry kind of like this great weather we've been having recently are we going to keep it Mikel? i get a feeling it's been too good to be true recently well for the first part of the week we'll stay mostly dry but we are going to see some more cloud cover building in late tonight to tomorrow maybe the chance for an isolated sprinkle but we'll take a close look at that in just a minute uh on your sideline sports brought to you by the hawk law group so I can't be the only one. You know when you think you've dreamed something and now it's happening right in front of you? Well, this isn't a dream. It is very, very real. It is net cutting season. It's happening again. Straight through the looking glass, no magic mirror could predict the start of this round. Not even this guy. Lander came out the start gate before the Jacks even heard the sound. Bearcats tag on 16 before the Jacks could get to two. She said it best, T for timeout. How about a T for Tyshawn Crawford? A pack of free throws put them up to scratch with some pledge to smooth it over. 38-36, Jags lead at the half. Turns out the director handed them the wrong script. Welcome to Act 2. The Jags go to 15 unanswered on an early run and didn't quite stop for a breath until the finish line from there on out. Lander couldn't keep up with the pace. The Jags run out the clock and take home the Peach Belt Conference title for the second year in a row. Yeah, we don't ever want to spot somebody 18 points on your home floor, but we didn't take bad shots. Kind of made a little adjustment on their defense, man. The next thing you know, it's, I kind of said to myself, I kind of said, I might have to move up too. Of Tyshawn Crawford's game 31, 22 came from the second half. Go ahead and give your MVP a round of applause. Not a good start, you know. These games, you want to get off to a good start, and we did. But uh, David Beattie was huge, came and made some shots, and then we went into a tight shot the rest of the game. So he was dominant. Dominant. A souvenir for you, another for Coach, and a bid to the NCAA tournament. Keeping the net cutter, the game time. Zion Cook and Aaliyah Boston provided 42 in South Carolina's 74 to 58 win over Tennessee. It is their seventh conference tournament crown in the past nine seasons. Boston was named the tournament MVP. The last time they were in this position, the Gamecocks fell to Kentucky in the title game. And since then, if you've been counting with me over the last few weeks, that's win number 38. I mean, we, we, we often have to remind ourselves where we come from. Like, we, uh, we used to come to this tournament, and we're out in one day. Enjoy it because there were a lot of times in which the season ended prematurely. And on, on a sour note, on those days in which uh, tw uh, 15, uh, 12 to 15 years ago when we weren't competing for championships. And, and that, those weren't fun times, but there were times in which humbled you and allowed you to figure things out so you can have days like this to enjoy. The Gamecocks will be the number one overall seed for the 2023 NCAA Tournament. Selection Sunday is March 12th. Over to Bay Hill 